Hi, for the past few weeks I have been trying to gather all materials and tools to be able to put up a bookbinding shop. One of the uh, problems I encountered is that either you get the vintage ones but they are very very expensive and you really have to uh, be on guard because once it is put on the market the next few days it's gone no matter how expensive it is and I just don't have that much money to be able to purchase everything so far the only thing that um, I was able to purchase is a uh, modern type guillotine which can only cut um, uh, the size of an A3 that's good enough for me a manual scorer and then so I have the guillotine. I actually bought two guillotines, one small one and one big one. The only two things that I'm looking for now is a book press and a stamping machine, hot foil stamping machine. Uh, the hot foil stamping machine, I think I can do without uh, at the moment. So yesterday, I, I, I picked up a really, really, really beautiful vintage guillotine. It is not much use for me because it's a, a very small guillotine but it is so beautiful that I thought I would have it. It's still working perfectly. That's the good thing about vintage uh, binding uh, uh, machineries and tools. They really last a long time. This is a uh, cast iron as well. And all, although the uh, the blade is is very rusty, I have to clean it, and it is very impressive. And so, because I'm also planning on putting up a small gift shop, everything handmade from books to to artworks and and many things, uh, I thought that would be a good functional display. Anyway, so I thought that I would make a presser. I've seen so many people who made their own book presser online and they are really very good. Uh, but I am not a carpenter. Most of them, most of the people whom I saw, they are actually carpenters and it, they are very well made and I am sure they're very durable. But I can't. I'm, I'm not a carpenter. So I will show you how I made my own book presser and here are the materials and procedure.
finished product. I, I put an extra wood on top of it just to make sure that the wood uh, in between the, 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 the base and the top will not warp. This would press everything down evenly. I remember my grandfather, uh, what he did with his uh, book presser. And by the way, his book presser is a makeshift one. He knows so many steel craftsmen in the Philippines, so he just drew the kind of book press that he wants. He had it assembled, and uh, I remember that he's using planks like this, but on the bottom of the planks, he used to have uh, a very thin foam covered in a newspaper and then covered with plastic. You know, those, those uh, soft plastic that you use to cover school notebooks and school projects. Then he pressed it uh, really, really well and evenly on the surface on all sides of uh, the planks that he used for the book press to have a little bit of cushion so that whenever you press something in between them, it protects the item that you're pressing because me, my grandfather moved on from book binding to wedding album making. So in wedding album making, uh, you're dealing with important uh, pictures and very fragile pictures. So maybe that's the reason why he used cushioned surface just to protect everything. So yeah, I, I am still okay. contemplating if I really need it because I am mainly going to do uh, journals and uh, scrapbooks. I'm going to have three planks so that I can put many projects in between them at the same time. Pretending that I, I place something in between and I put the extra plank on top. And so I, I, cho I chose a, a G clamp. And of course, I chose to, to put uh, uh, something that would, would serve as a foot, mainly because I want to be able to put the, uh, the bottom part of the clamp easily without you know, having to, to lift everything up and, and uh, place the clamp. So this would just sit nicely on the bottom and then uh, uh, just adjust this and then make a, a small pressure just to make it stand a little bit while you put the other side. Yeah, and then when, when there's a, a little bit of pressure on both, you can adjust both at the same time, creating uh, an even uh, pressure on the, uh, on the item that, that you are pressing so there it goes it's um, I, I think this will this will uh, last a very long time for me while waiting for the perfect time to, for me to uh, see uh, the uh, book press that that I, I've always wanted and I'm sure I would be able to find one but I, I, I think I'm going to be happy with this it will it will uh, serve its, its purpose for a very long time and I spent very little money on this one because the presser that uh, the, the, the modern presser that I saw that's coming from China is around hundred and fifty dollars which if you think about it it's not much but the shipping is like hundred and seventy dollars <laughs> plus tax getting it into Australia. So you will actually be spending, I think, more than, than around uh, $400 together with the tax. So I, I just don't have that money right now. So I would settle for a $68 <laughs> makeshift presser. So try it at home and see if it works for you. See you next time.